The orb or the opening range breakout is a very popular daily trading strategy. It aims to capture breakout moves that often happen shortly after the market opens. This strategy can be traded on different timeframes, but which one of them is the best? I tested five years of S&P 500 data to find out. So let's begin with the baseline strategy first of all. I typically trade this on the 15 minute time frame. So here I am on a 15 minute chart. And because this is specific to the New York market open, I have to make sure that my time zone is set to New York. So with that done, I'm now looking for the opening candle, which happens at 9.30. So I look for that 9.30 a.m. candle, which is this big green one here. And because I'm on the 15 minute chart, it means that this candle here contains the first 15 minutes of the market open information. So it's from 9.30 to 9.45. And I can use the high and the low to mark my opening range. So I can draw a line from the low and extend it out. And then another one at the high and extend that one out as well. And this gives me my opening range for the day. Now that I have this range, I just sit and wait for a candle to break through it. This doesn't always happen right away. There are times when the price is just going to sit inside this range for a while before it finally breaks out. And it's important during that time to have the patience to wait for that breakout. In this case though, the breakout came on the first candle immediately after my market open candle. So I actually got the breakout right away with this green candle here. What is important though, is that the candle needs to not only break out, but it needs to close above the opening range high. So if that candle had broken out like it did, but then it came back down and closed somewhere below the opening range and just gave this big wick, then I wouldn't take that as a trade. So I need the confirmation of the price breaking through and then actually closing above the opening range. That candle did that, so that gives me a confirmed entry signal. And since that happens at the close of the candle, I wait until the open of the next one to be able to enter my trade. So then I can go long at the open of this candle here. My stop loss goes at the other side of the range. So if I'm entering long here, then I put the stop loss at the bottom of my opening range, which is the low of that 930 candle. And then I drag my take profit to one and a half times. So I'm aiming for one and a half times the size of my stop loss. And in this case, the trade, it did have an initial pullback into the range, but then it broke out again and it continued on to that take profit. And that's the base strategy. There are some additional tweaks and filters to it that I've spoken about in other videos, like using a trailing stop or setting a minimum and a maximum value for my opening range. But what I've explained here is the base strategy. But now let's look at another trade. This one came on the 3rd of July and it was the exact same setup. It's on a 15 minute time frame. I got my opening range defined with this white box here. I then had the candle that broke through and closed above. So everything lined up correctly. I placed my order at the open of the next candle. Stop loss went to the bottom of the range down here. And I aimed for a one and a half times take profit. Price moved towards it and got quite close, but then eventually it turned around and stopped me out. Now let's look at the same trade on a different time frame. Here I am on the five minute chart. So the trade is exactly the same and the conditions are all the same as well. I still use the first 15 minutes for my opening range. But because I'm on a five minute chart, it means that I take the first three candles. So these first three candles, they define the opening range. And it's exactly the same as it was before. I'm now waiting for the breakout through that range, which comes right away in the first five minute candle. And that means that my entry comes sooner than it did on a 15 minute chart, which is up here. So if I was to enter the open of this candle, which is the first candle after my five minute breakout, stop loss goes down here just as normal. And then I aim for a one and a half times take profit. Well, now the trade is a winning trade. It got into the breakout that little bit sooner, which meant that the stop loss was smaller and the take profit was closer. So just changing the time frame turned this trade from a losing trade into a winning trade. That isn't always going to be the case though. On this trade on the 17th of July, again, I'm still on the five minute chart. My 15 minute chart entry came right around here but the five minute chart entry would have happened up here. So the entry would have been at a worse point on this lower time frame. And I can even take this further and go down to the one minute time frame, which will give me even earlier entries. But earlier doesn't necessarily mean better, as I've just shown with this trade here. So how can I tell which time frame is the best? 
Well, what I'm going to do is backtest all three timeframes, the 15 minute, five minute, and one minute. I will keep everything else exactly the same, and I'm gonna see how they compare. This will give me the baseline, but then later on, I'm going to optimize each of the timeframes to see how they all stack up against each other. So let's get into the backtest results. This is the equity curve for the 15 minute time frame. So this is my default strategy settings, and it's what I've tested many times before in my previous videos. I'm testing from 2020 up to the current day. So this is five and a half years worth of data. It's on a 15 minute chart and it's long only trades. I'll talk about long versus short in a second. My stop loss is at the bottom of the range and the take profit is one and a half times that. So this gives me my baseline. And as you can see, the equity curve is pretty strong for this strategy. This is the same back test, but now it's taking short only trades. And although there was some instances where it's made profits, it seems that overall, over the long term, this strategy doesn't perform well in the short direction. We go back to the 15 minute chart. This is for comparison. This is the long trades. And then I compare it to the five minutes. It still gives me pretty good equity curve. It still moves up the way, but it's a little bit choppier than before. And it doesn't reach the same level of balance. So the, strat the original strategy goes up to about 1400 from a starting balance of 100. On the five minute chart, same starting balance, but it gets to just over 400. I then repeat the experiment for the one minute chart, which does slightly better than the five minute, but still doesn't quite reach the levels of the 15 minute chart. What's interesting is how well it's performed this year. So throughout 2025, this strategy has done exceptionally well. Now let's see all of those numbers side by side. Remember, these are the default settings. So all the strategies work in the same way. They're just on a different time frame. In terms of annual return, both the five and one minute underperform the original 15 minute time frame, And the drawdown for both of them is quite a bit higher as well. They generate more trades, which also makes sense. On a lower time frame, it's more likely that I'm going to have a candle that actually closes above the opening range. Whereas on the 15 minute, that might just be a wick, but the price closes back below the range and there's no trade. The win rate suffers a bit as well. So it goes from 47% for the 15 minute down to 439 44% for both the one and the five minutes. So on the first pass, using the exact same settings across the three, it looks like the 15 minute is far better than the other two timeframes. I also then did a test on the five minute in the short direction, just to get a comparison for that as well. And that also does just as badly as shorts on a 15 minute. And this may just be because the S&P 500 has a natural upward bias. So long trades are going to do better than short trades. But I know that a lot of people out there do trade this in a short direction. So maybe your entry criteria are a little bit different to what I'm testing here. Let me know how you trade this in a short direction. And I'd be interested in backtesting that to see if it can improve on these results here. So far, I've been comparing apples to apples, but I feel like that's limiting the performance of the five and one minute timeframes. So what I did next was I compared a whole range of different take profits on each of the timeframes. And this gave me a way of effectively optimizing them. It's something that I did for the 15 minute. So it makes sense to do it for the five and the one. Now what you're seeing here is the five minute chart as before, but this time I'm testing loads of different take profit levels. Each of the different colored lines represents a different take profit target. So the original rules are a 1.5 take profit, which is this one here. And that is the purple line. So that ends up somewhere around here. But well above that are the red, green, blue, and orange lines. And those are actually just the increasing levels of take profit target. The best one is the orange one, which is a take profit of two times. So now if I go back and rerun this five minute with a two times take profit, the performance is much better than it was before. And I can repeat that for the one minute time frame, where the effect is actually even more pronounced. So now it's the same thing. I'm testing out various take profit targets one and a half times the original strategy is still in purple. So that is somewhere around here, but now it's completely eclipsed by some of the other take profit targets. The green and the blue are the best performers up here. So the green line is take profit of two and a half and the blue is three. I typically tend towards lower take profit targets. So I would prefer to use the green line here. There's often this belief that higher take profit targets are bigger. So aiming for three to one, four to one and so on is better because of course that trade then produces more profit but it's related or correlated to the win rate so typically the further i increase my take profit target the lower the win rate becomes 
and I prefer getting a higher win rate when I can. So given the option here, I would always tend for the slightly lower take profit. And that's why I've chosen two and a half. So now if I rerun the back test with two and a half on a one minute time frame, the equity curve is very different and it performs far better than before. And now I can get a new comparison table. This time I'm comparing the optimized values across the time frames. And now I can see a much clearer difference. So the five minute still seems to lag behind. If I'm comparing it to the 15 minute, the five minute has lower returns and it has higher drawdown. So I wouldn't swap from 15 to five minutes. However, the one minute makes a different case. The annual return is far greater at 75.3%. The drawdown is also higher than the 15 minute. I guess it gets into trades a little bit earlier, meaning that potentially there's going to be more losses. It also takes more trades. So 940 versus 797 with the 15 minute time frame. That could lead to higher transaction costs because there are more trades, which would eat slightly into this annual return. And lastly, the win rate decreases. And this actually goes hand in hand with what I was just saying. The higher the take profit ratio, the lower the win rate. It's not a linear relationship, but they are connected. So on the one minute versus 15 minute, I'm sacrificing some win rate but I'm gaining a higher profitability per trade. Another downside of this faster time frame, though, is that it requires monitoring the market more closely, unless this is automated with a trading bot. But otherwise, this just comes down to trader preference. It seems that both the 15 and the one minute time frame perform pretty well, and they both have their pros and cons. The one minute is maybe the more aggressive style, whereas the 15 minute is a bit more steady. Something else that I want to test out is the length of the initial opening range. Most strategies use the first 15 minutes. So on this five minute chart, that's the first three candles. But what if just taking the first five minutes gives a better opening range? Or maybe it's better to wait a full 30 minutes and get a more stable range. I'm going to test that out next. So make sure you subscribe to get notified when I post that video. Thanks for watching.